Hi, we talked about various migration tools covering rehost and replatform strategies in some previous videos. Let's talk about application modernization here. For ultimately, one of the primary objectives of migrating to AWS or any cloud for that matter is to take advantage of the services and agility that the cloud offers. Migrate and modernize is the broader theme of topics that we will start with today starting with a look at modernizing monolithic application architectures. This video will cover the overview and a subsequent video will dive into the detailed hands-on demo. I'm Raghvir Varhagri and this is Hands-on AWS. A quick glance at what we will cover today. We will talk about application modernization in the context of the cloud migration journey then go over a simple example of a monolithic application architecture. We will talk about a couple of common modernization patterns, the facade pattern and the strangler pattern that help you arrive at a modernization, modern architecture in steps. When an organization goes through the migration journey, typically from an on-prem or co-located data center to the AWS cloud, it is a fairly large and complex undertaking with a lot of moving parts and crucial decisions to be taken along the way. It helps to break it down into broad phases. And the AWS migration methodology recommends that we look at it as these three phases. Start with SS, then mobilize, and the last phase, migrate and modernize. The first phase, SS, is concerned primarily with discovering the inventory in scope for the migration and building a business case for the stakeholders to understand the value of moving to the cloud. Once there is buy-in to move forward, the second phase, Mobilize, dives into a detailed application portfolio analysis and migration planning. We also lay the foundations for the cloud footprint of the migrated workloads. A landing zone is established and the security and governance controls, the operational model and enablement of people capabilities needed to operate it are set in motion. It is also essential to conduct the pilot migrations at this stage to validate the whole process. The migrate and modernize phase is where you do the full scale migration, typically done over multiple waves. And then you operate and continuously optimize them. This includes any ongoing modernization of those workloads to fully take advantage of what the cloud has to offer. Now, the migration planning that is done in mobilize phase and executed in the subsequent phase involves decisions on grouping the applications and determining the specific migration strategy for each of them. If the goal for a set of applications is to run them in the most optimal manner in the cloud, then there are a couple of ways you could go about modernizing them. One, either as part of the migration plan itself, or two, after the migration is executed and the workloads are operating on the cloud as part of a modernization track. Let's look at them in a bit more detail. Starting with the migration strategies at our disposal when doing the migration planning. You have probably seen this slide before or a variation of this called the six hours or more recently the seven hours of cloud migration. For a given application in your portfolio, you evaluate whether it indeed needs to go to the cloud. Otherwise it gets relegated to retain or retire altogether. Among the five actual migration strategies you have to choose from, from top to bottom, one to five, there is a spectrum of increasing complexity, effort and risk involved in executing the actual migration. We will single out number two rehost or number five refactor for the path, as paths for this discussion. Rehosting, also called lift and shift, is one of the quickest ways you can migrate to the cloud where virtually nothing changes as far as the application is concerned, except where it is running. Refactoring, on the other hand, goes through multiple intermediate steps, a detailed design, implementation, and various levels of testing. This usually takes much longer than a lift and shift approach. While there may be compelling arguments as to why a given application should take a particular path, one has to also balance it against the objectives and considerations surrounding the overall migration program. Organizations have an interest in making the transition over to the cloud as quickly as they can, often for reasons like an impending DC exit deadline or the overall business case and TCO analysis calling for uh, certain timelines. That is to ensure the business reaps the overall benefits sooner. As such, there are two alternative approaches to modernizing an application. And we are talking about a typical legacy monolithic application here. One, you could 
go the refactor route and expend all the time and energy up front during the migration itself or number two you could rehost the application first get it into the cloud and then go about modernizing it this second approach rehost and then modernize has some advantages for one this approach lets you deploy resources for redesigning the application over a more flexible schedule without being constrained by or in turn straining the larger mig migration schedu schedule and its resources. In other words, this enables a more rapid DC exit and completion of the large scale migration program. This way, the initial value of moving, to, moving the workloads to the cloud, be it easy to instance right sizing, cost savings from reserved instances, etc., can kick in sooner and it starts contributing to the ROI. There may be other reasons too. Uh, and you may find after considering everything that matters that the second approach works better for your case. Also, once you decide to modernize a monolithic application, you have a few choices on target architecture. Breaking up a monolith into microservices is the current best practice. You can either containerize those services or go serverless. We will look at the latter, which is serverless, as today's example. We navigate this modernization journey through a couple of intermediate steps. There are a couple of useful patterns that let us do this with minimal disruption and with minimal risk. Let's look at each of these steps. Let's take the example of a three-tier application. The technology stack could be anything really, but here we are looking at a simple web application front-end with front-end hosted on S3 with an EC2 instance hosting a Spring Boot application that is the middle layer here and a database layer with a single RDS MySQL instance. As it stands, the application layer is architected as a monolith. For lightweight or non-business critical applications, this might be okay. But for a production grade application that has requirements of scalability, high availability, fault tolerance, or high performance, and you want to operate at optimal cost, you would want to do much better than this. Say you want to transform this into a microservices based application. And you want to do that without causing disruption to the business users that are regularly using your application through the front end. The facade pattern introduces an API layer between the front end and the back end of the application. For each functionality offered by the application back end, you create an API method on the facade that simply serves as a pass through layer for these method calls. This would require minimal configuration changes to the front end application to call the API facade instead of the application which typically involves updating some endpoints in the config. What this then allows you to do is to keep the front-end integrations intact while you can work on modifying the back-end. As long as you maintain the functionality offered by the API facade, modifying the implementation behind the scenes is transparent to the front-end application and its users. The next useful pattern then is the strangler pattern. Here we start carving out functionality from the monolith application and implement it in the new architecture you choose. In this case, we would be replacing a part of the original functionality with a serverless function. And it could be backed by a serverless NoSQL database instead of RDS. As we said, these changes will be transparent to the front end and its users. You repeat this as many times as needed to iteratively carve out more and more functionality out of the monolith until eventually there is no more need for monolith application and the facade API does not need to route any front-end request to the monolith at all. At this stage, the triangular pattern would be complete uh, in that uh, or original monolith is completely triangled and uh, well dead. You can get rid of the body, so to speak. And the final architecture here is a completely serverless microservices based application. We replaced EC2 with Lambda, we replaced RDS with DynamoDB, and we introduced API gateway along with minimal configuration changes to the front-end application. This way, we are able to modernize our application with minimal disruption and minimal risk. And we do that after moving the application first to the cloud as is. That's all for now. Hope this was useful overview. We will meet again in the next video where we will do a deep dive walkthrough of the same steps in a hands-on demo with an example application. This is Hands-on AWS and thanks for watching.